All right, chat. Matt, Pat, it is. Let me tell you something. You may not know this. And when I say that, you definitely don't know this. I get so much hate on my Matt, Pat reactions because the context is gone on the re-uploads. That I get so much hate hey, for my Matt, Pat re reactions. Hey, right, shut up, Matt, Pat. No one likes you. Anyway, the reason why I say that is because you don't get the context. You just get me opening up a Matt Pat video and just roasting the crap out of him. Like without context, it makes it look like I actually hate the man. I don't hate Matt Pat. I clown on him as a meme because he takes himself so seriously. The meme is that I'm taking him overly seriously too. So with that prefacing out of the way, let's watch Matt Pat absolutely ruin Rick and Morty and take an amazing show like Rick and Morty and absolutely obliterate it. He's gonna say that's just a theory, but Matt Pat's a known liar uh, from uh, that time that he said that he never watched porn. Um, known liar Matt Pat here. New theory for Rick and Morty. I'm excited, baby. Let's jump right into it. Let's try not to get me canceled. Let's try not to get me beefing with the Matt Pat. Tards. Hey Rick, that season six premiere was really good, but like thematically, what was it all about? And, and and where does the show go from here? No time to explain. Here we go. So there was time to explain. Who has ever taken this long to vanish? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna start the episode now, okay? Wow, that's so cringe. Stop digging for hidden layers and just be impressed. Oh my God, they just, he ripped off the... Oh God, the random Megalomania sound is killing me. Matt Pat has a lot of clown takes. I know, that's why it's funny. Uh, because he has a lot of clown takes and we're clowning on him now. Known liar, Matt, known liar, Pat. <laughs> Back from the time that he said he never watched porn. Remember when Matt said he didn't watch porn? Yeah, he lied, baby, he lied. Today we're gonna tear him a new butthole. Oh God, the first episode, if you wanna know what the first episode was about, you'd watch my reaction of it on Nuxanor because I, made the correct answer. Hello, internet. Welcome to Film Theory, the show that knows that what people call curiosity is just a chemical that compels animals to seek out knowledge. Ladies and Gromflamites. What does that even mean? We're so awesome and cool here on Film Theory that we know that humans are actually powered by chemistry. <laughs> what? Like, what? what's your point? Matt, known liar, pet. It's Rick Sanchez and the rest of his dysfunctional family are back. And they came back hard. Last week's season six premiere, Solarix, did not disappoint. I know there's been a lot of discussion lately about Rick and Morty losing its way over the last season or so, but if this new episode is anything to judge by, it looks like the show is coming back swinging. Huge lore reveals, check. My original Rick killed your family? Seems like you understand fine, Morty. That was A plus repiping. Hello I feel like I would have gotten a copyright strike for just showing that clip. This, this man, he has inside people, and they're let, it's not fair. He has people on the inside. I got a copyright strike for showing a clip like that. Hilarious moments, double check. Hey, remember like a second ago when you pretended not to know who Iron Man was? Who was that for? The introduction of- That's his example of hilarious moment. I mean, it was funny, but really that that's his example. A brand new villain, check again. Oh, oh, oh you found me. I shoot, I shoot the, the first, first monitor, monitor too. But there's also- Dude, we watched the episode! We're here watching your theory because we watched the episode and we loved it. You didn't need- you don't need to explain to us that- Guys, there are funny moments. There's also a villain. Uh, there, there's lore. There's lore, guys. <laughs> something else that's hiding under the surface of this episode. Something new. Something that makes me hopeful for the future of the series. Healing. Well, there's certainly a lot of plot going on in this episode. Something that a lot of other channels have talked about exhaustively in recaps and explainers by this point. Exhaustingly, really? You're gonna roast other channels for talking about it exhaustively and you're gonna go ahead and make the same ass video? Really, bro? You're gonna make fun of other channels for talking about Rick and Morty? I see a whole lot less discussion on the themes of this particular episode. I, mean, I literally talked about the themes in my video on it, on my second channel. God, it's so scary. I mean, plot-wise, the show did more than- Also, do you realize that every single film theory is literally, 80% of them is just recap, right? Like 80% of your videos are recap, and you're gonna call other people out for exhaustively making content about Rick and Morty. <laughs> bro, <laughs> bro, bro, oh, classic Matt, Matt, known liar, Pat, it's my boy, 
Again, this is all for meme purposes. I don't actually dislike the guy. I'm just clowning on him a little bit. All right, calm down. Calm your titties, chat. That's going to start hating me. And enough to bring everyone up to speed with what they needed to know. I explained it fine, Morty. You're spoon feeding spoons. But thematically, this episode is a pivotal moment for the franchise as the characters pull not just a full dimensional reset, but also a full emotional reset. So consider. So you're going to say that, oh, we guys are all from the same universe, actually, bro. We're actually all from the same universe, even though we're all from different universes and technically, biologically, not together. But since we're all together now in the same universe, we're all a family, so it doesn't really matter. This is about, as I said, to quote myself, bonds beyond blood, and we can begin to heal now. And then you got the epic Mr. Mr. Frumbles, Mr. Frundles at the end of the episode showing you that it doesn't really matter that it's their original universe. That's literally what I said in my reaction. And now he's going to come out here and be like, guys, you didn't understand the lore and the themes. This is about healing, guys. Not about Mr. Frundles. And chat, damn bro, chill. Calm down, okay? I'm, I'm chill, okay? I'm beaming. Consider this less an analysis God. of what happened in the episode and more a breakdown of what I think this episode is actually trying to say to the audience. What themes are Rick and Morty going to be exploring throughout season six? Because between all the sci-fi mind games and portal gunless dimension hopping, this show is doing something else. It's showing us two different and seemingly opposite strategies for coping with grief. I know, I know. Animated therapy is everyone's favorite subject to talk about when it comes to their favorite wacky sci-fi comedy cartoon. But what Rick and- Rick and Morty's been doing that since the first season. Guys, no way! Rick and Morty is starting to talk about how to manage with grief, guys! Meanwhile, Rick and Morty, episode one, shows Summer crying over the, the, the bully guy that Rick froze to death and killed. And we're seeing her deal with grief in episode one of season one. Calm, calm down, homie. Morty the show. Matt's gonna come out here and be like, guys, I'm about to tell you something that you probably didn't notice. But you know how there was like the voice of his wife in the next room constantly like talking to him? That he made he made the ghost, the wife ghost to haunt him and stuff? And, and he put his universe in a time loop and stuff? That was because he couldn't let go. But now he's finally learning to let go. Which was plain as day in the actual episode. And he's gonna say it like it's his brilliant idea and this episode in particular have shown us is that traumatic experiences like watching your wife and daughter murdered right in front of you, those are things that are going to come with consequences. Not just consequences for the lore of the franchise, but also emo- Dude, why do you say it like that? Dude, that's how he talks about lollies too, it's crazy. Consequences. Not just consequences for the lore of the fr- Oh my god, this man, he just, every time he hears the word lore, he just starts orgasming. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> He just hears the word lore and just uh. <laughs> franchise, but also emotional consequences. Consequences that affect what these characters are. And Wait, so traumatic experience affect characters in, in TV shows? Now the comment section is gonna be like, Nox, I can't believe you don't mean commandment. This is a joke. I'm memeing here. I'm taking it past an extreme What they God. want to be moving forward. So reset your portal guns and your expectations, loyal theorists, because we're going in. In case you missed the episode, here's what we're going in. Hence. Until here was the intro of the video, meaning nothing was actually said yet in the first two minutes and 42 seconds. Just saying. You need to know. The episode picks up exactly where season five left off. Oh, remember how he said that other channels are exhaustingly just going through what happens in the episode? It took him two minutes and 45 seconds to talk about what happened in the first scene of the episode. I'm just saying. Rick and Morty stranded on the destroyed remains of the Citadel and portal technology completely non-operable. They're eventually saved by Captain Mar- I mean, Space Beth. Rick accidentally resets all portal- He was making fun of channels that were exhaustingly talking about the references, and he just- pointed out the reference that happened in the first scene of the episode. Travelers back to their original dimensions, which sends Jerry back to a failing season two marriage with Beth, Morty back to the Cronenberg monster universe from when his Jessica love potion went awry, and Rick back to the garage where he lost his wife and daughter. I might be mistaken, but is he uh, summarizing the plot of the episode? The thing that he said that it, other channels have been doing exhaustingly? I, I might be mistaken, because maybe I don't understand. Maybe I'm not on the level to understand Matt, Known Liar, Pat here. Is he just, just recapping? Is he, is he doing that thing that he roasted at the chant? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just asking, guys. I, not, I'm not that I would point this out or anything. I'm just curious. This one moment finally confirms once and for all Rick's backstory that he. It was confirmed in the last episode of the last season, bro. That whole thing was confirmed. This didn't confirm it. Are you watching the same show? Sorry. Sorry, Matt. He was indeed Blue Pants Rick. He was built differently. He wasn't interested in being the smartest guy in the universe. Excuse me? Bro, Ricks don't pass on this. It also makes me wonder if Evil Morty was also reset to his original dimension by this move, but... No, because he left the... 
the infinite universe thingy within Rick's thing. They literally explained that. He's not. He's past the finite curve. That was the whole point. It's, it's like, are we watching the same show, bro? Like, maybe watch the show before you make a theory about it. I'm just saying. That remains to be seen. Anyway, we see the prison of grief that Rick has created for himself. The voice of his dead wife, Diane, always one room away, in a day that's set to repeat infinitely. Meanwhile, Morty meets up with his original Jerry, who is not happy to see him. Summer and Beth have both died, and so Jerry has moved on with his life. He's a survivor. He'll do anything to help his chances. This includes stealing Morty's stuff, rejecting his help, and leaving him to die. Wrote this Dude, he's literally summarizing the episode! He's doing the same thing he roasted everyone for doing. Baskers had to set trap, thought you'd have cooler sh Meanwhile, Summer Beth and Space Beth go on a mini-adventure to set portal navigation beacons for Rick to follow back to their universe, hashing out their own issues of family and identity while fighting alien space squids. With interdimensional travel now made easier, Rick hops on over to the Cronenberg universe to save Morty, and then seeks out the Rick from Morty's dimension. He didn't go there to save Morty, he went there to seek out the Rick from Morty's dimension. Dude, you're literally, you're summarizing incorrectly. He went to this dimension because he said that, yeah, ghost wife said, doesn't that mean that that Rick was reset to his original universe too? And he's like, oh God, I have to save Morty because he's from this dimension. <sighs> Dog, what's going on? <laughs> Matt Pat, you're just reviewing the episode. And the same sci-fi Rick Prime that killed his wife and daughter, setting the entire series into motion. Tracking Rick Prime to his invisible space base, our Rick goes on a suicidal rampage in an attempt to kill him. But he's and he's explaining. Really, bro? We saw we saw the episode. Stopped when Morty convinces Rick job. that his new family is more important than getting revenge. Rick and Morty pick up Summer, Beth, and Space Beth before saving Jerry from the unhappy marriage in his original universe, heading home together as a happy family unit. Until season two, Jerry releases a cute abomination that ruins everything. <laughs> Way to go, Jerry. Cue the family having to find another new dimension. Though here, they're gonna have to deal with one annoying trait. Bit of a rush job, actually. So they do say Parmesan weird. How do they say Parmesan? <laughs> So I'm guessing that everyone picked up on the biggest running theme throughout this episode, Rick's grief over his dead family. The whole haunted by the digital ghost of your dead I mean, wife sorta. thing isn't exactly subtle. As Rick returns to his ri It's not the main theme of the episode. The main theme is not getting over grief. The main theme is Bonds Beyond Blood. But anyway, if you watched- maybe, maybe if you watched the episode you'd, you'd have understood. Grief is an emotion. It's not the theme. <laughs> Bro, he says the theme- <laughs> It's the theme of the episode is grief. That's not the theme of the episode! Do you even know what that means? Original Dimension, God. we as the audience see that his past strategies for coping with the loss of his wife and daughter have been, well, as unhealthy and over the top as you would expect from a man like Rick Sanchez. Unable to fully accept the loss of his wife Diane, Rick recreated her as an AI. A he is summarizing his summary of the episode now! God, I hope you like when I make these mad pet reaction things because I get blasted for them and, and I don't have fun at all. <laughs> literal disembodied <laughs> voice that follows him throughout their home, oh, always God. just out of sight and one room away. You thought if you could see or touch me, it might give you a level of comfort. But of course, because this is a creation made by Rick meant to torture himself, the AI- Wait guys, is Rick actually sad? is also eager to bring up the young Beth who tragically never made it past childhood. Did you find our daughter's killer? You'll find him. You always do everything you set your mind to. Except keep your family alive. This is like the swing in Naruto. You know, every single time Naruto gets into a fight, ba -da -da, ba -da -da -da, they see sad little baby Naruto swinging on his swing in the flashback. Bro, this is new ground. I have never seen a video start off saying, I'm not gonna do with those other people do by recapping an episode and then proceeds to recap the episode and now he's recapping the recap bro i was so in the zone even the random megalovania sound didn't affect me while all of this might seem cruel remember it's self-inflicted cruelty rick created this ai and everything that it does is ultimately something that he programmed into yeah we it. know you're, her. you're a thing i built we to know. torture myself in this dimension rick is living uh, in a mental prison of his own creation and he isn't the only one in his grief he's also forcing everyone around him to to live in a physical prison as he said this 
What is going on? He is so unwilling to let go of the past that he's kept his home in a state of perpetual stasis, pulling a WandaVision by locking his real-life neighbors into a cycle that repeats the same day over and over and over. For the decades that Rick's been gone, his trauma has trapped the innocent bystanders in a never-ending loop, all because he's unable to let go of the past. They say my mind is- Dude, didn't I predict that he was gonna make a whole thing about this? Like in the beginning of this reaction? Didn't I literally predict that he was gonna do this? Held captive in a time loop, trapped in the day of a traumatic event by the agony of a formidable intelligence that my body spoils and yearns for death. So in Rick, the show presents us with a man who clearly cannot let go of the trauma of his past. He's created a prison for himself. He submerges himself in suffering every day. Clearly, this is not the healthiest strategy for confront- You don't say. ...ting your grief. Something that the show repeatedly hammered- He's met. Padding for time! Good one, Chet. There's home. Poor weirdo. I pity them. Wish they could let go and move on. Sounds healthy. Sure would be. But while that's already a powerful commentary on the power of grief and what it can do if it consumes you, this episode also shows a completely different way for a father to react to the death of his wife and daughter. And no, we're no longer talking about Rick I'm here. See, on. Rick. Instead of getting stuck in a cycle, you see, these are two people that grieved and got past it in different ways, guys. Remember how I just summarized that? Well, I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna do it again. The video's a time loop. Bro, I'm literally sitting in a time loop right now. I'm literally sitting it in a time loop. Isn't the only man loop. who's lost his family in this episode? As Morty returns to his home dimension. Why do you pronounce Morty like that? He's a child. God. Episode. As Morty returns. Morty. <laughs> Morty. <laughs> yeah. Returns to his home dimension, now a jungle-covered Cronenberg post-apocalyptic wasteland. We meet his original Jerry. Dude, I. He said this before. Like that that's a, that that happened at the three minute mark of the video. Literally. This bailing season two marriage with Beth, Morty back to the Cronenberg monster universe from when his Jessica love potion went awry. From Beth infinitely. Died, and so Jerry has moved on with his life. He's a Alright, so that's what happened. Survivor. He'll yeah, at the at the three minute forty five second mark. On to the seven minute mark. Episode. As Morty returns to Morty. his home dimension, now a jungle-covered Cronenberg post-apocalyptic wasteland, we meet his original Jerry. Like we are literally living in a time loop. Is this a meta video? Is Matt Pat making? Dude, 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 are you ready for this? Matt Pat is suffering in his own grief so much that he's trapped all of his viewers in a time loop. Now that, dude, if he actually did that, that would be a huge brain epic move. I would love that. But unfortunately, <laughs> life on the hellscape has not been easy. And sadly, it was more than this universe's Beth and Summer could survive. We spent a long time in that ice. A gentle mutant licked us out, but Beth got sick and Summer didn't thaw right. By the time our Morty finds him, this Jerry stands alone against the world, a hardened survivor. But unlike Rick, who's been stuck in the past, Jerry's a man who's chosen to let go, to move Jerry. forward, to get over the loss of his loved ones. Your Jerry. mom and sister died, Morty! And I moved on from caring, and that is the best deal you will ever get. Dude, I hate that he plays clips in his video, and I got a copyright strike. Dude, he's a summary channel. At least mine was added commentary. He's just summarizing. And he's not getting a copyright strike. Jerry's worked so hard to get over this pain that he wants nothing to do with his own son when the long-lost Morty finally returns to the home dimension. So the show is very clearly presenting us with two different fathers, both confronted with the horrible reality of a dead partner and child, but reacting to it in two seemingly opposite ways. One, Rick, is stuck in the past. Well, the other Jerry. <laughs> dude, the megalovania sound. What? Dude, I have this megalovania sound playing on random, right? One hour of silence, occasionally broken by the first four notes of megalovania, which is my new favorite video on YouTube. Originally, it was my prison, but now it is my freedom. Harry is looking towards the future. Rick is desperately clinging. If Matt Powell had watched porn, all this would be different. To what he's lost, well, Jerry would just as soon forget it all entirely, giving up everything else he had in his old life in the process. Now, what do you mean giving up everything else he had in his own life? He can't jump from dimension to dimension like Rick can? Bro, he just gave up on his old life. Dude, they were murdered. What's he supposed to do, not give up? He's living in an apocalypse. We are not watching the same show. 
Whenever Rick and Morty shows us this kind of black and white contrast, it's usually the creator's way of trying to tell us something. It's almost as if the Rick and Morty writers are pitting these two opposite coping strategies against each other to see which one works. But instead of choosing sides here, Solarix is actually telling us that these methods aren't all that different. No Though it way. seems like both Rick and Jerry are dealing with grief in opposite ways, the truth is that they're making the same mistake. As oh much as Jerry might talk God. about leaving the past behind, looking forward and moving on with his life, he's still haunted by his past just as much as Rick is. Of course, it's almost like grief sticks with you guys. It's almost like when something tragic happens, you live with that tragedy. Bro, grief is deep, guys. Grief is so deep. We see this at the end of the episode when Rick Prime shows up in the Cronenberg dimension. Jerry sees this as an opportunity to take revenge on the people who ruined the world that he knew. If you hate them too, I could be down for a little team up. Now admittedly, that might have just been a fake out on Jerry's part to fool Rick Prime into letting his guard down, but throughout the rest of the episode, we repeatedly see that while Jerry says that he's let go, he clearly hasn't. When Morty shows up- Family died. He, and he's an idiot. Like, he's Jerry. Okay? Bro. Jerry is only willing to talk to him on friendly terms for as long as it takes to steal all his stuff. Jerry is actively running away from serious conversations with his natural born son, leaving notes behind as a distraction technique in order to buy him time in order to escape. Even if they weren't related, this might be the only other normal, unmutated human left on the planet, but Jerry can't seem to accept any kind of future that involves accepting Morty's help, even ones that get him away from this living nightmare. If Rick comes back, we can, we can find you a new reality! Uh it is confirmed. That MatPat is the eighth circle of hell. <laughs> New summer, a job. Oh, you don't get it, Cam. Except for this conversation, my, my life, life is, is perfect. perfect. Rick was always right. Everyone needs to let go. He's taken Rick's advice of letting go and stretched it to its unhealthiest extreme. He's let go of being a dad to Morty and Summer, a husband to Beth, part of society as a whole. He let go of being a husband to Beth. Dude, his wife was his wife was killed. She's dead. What, is, what does that even mean? <laughs> Like, what is happening? And he said this so many times! Stop saying the same thing! For the last two minutes, he was talking about the same concept that he said in the sentence. It's one sentence! It's like deep thoughts with the deep. They're dead, bro! They're dead! Bro, I cannot believe. I cannot believe that, that this guy whose wife died just let go of her like that. All of that is part of the man that Jerry used to be. On a surface level, that might seem like he's escaped from his past, but the truth is that he's just blindly running from his past. And he's not running from his past, he's in an apocalypse! blindly running from your past is still letting that grief control you. Our Rick and this original Jerry are both men who never really processed the grief of losing their families. Rick chose to wall- How is he supposed to process it? His fa He's doing as healthy of a job as he could. He's living, right? He's not torturing himself. Like, what do you want him to do? He can't go to another dimension. What's he supposed to do? Matt Pat's gonna end this video. If Rick and Jerry were actually strong, suicide should have been on the table. <laughs> God. Oh, Lord. If anyone actually even has thoughts like that, seriously, reach out to someone. Reach out to a hotline. Reach out to your loved ones. Uh, that was a joke. That was a joke. But but I'm just saying. Follow in his grief. Well, Jerry chose to run away from it. These Bro. look like different responses, but ultimately both approaches have the same consequence. The grief remains unresolved. It Bro, this man's just saying, dude, dude, should murder Jerry's wife and Jared be like, you know what? Thank you. I will now embrace the future and not be held back continues to haunt them. In Rick's case, it's a literal haunting, an AI ghost and a nightmare reality of his own creation. And while Jerry might not have been directly <laughs> responsible- Well-timed Megalovania notes. ...for creating this particular nightmare world, he refuses to leave it when the opportunity presents it. Is it just me? Or did he say the same thing for the last five minutes? Self. He chooses to remain Say there just new. like Rick. I mean, this right here is not the face of a man who's happy or satisfied with his course of life. His family was killed! His family was killed and he's not happy with his course of life? What's going on here? I mean... <laughs> you should've just gotten over it, bitch. You see, the show is presenting us with a false dichotomy here, where the only choices seem to be clinging to the past and drowning in your grief, or running from the past. Does this man- this man is gonna say the solution to grief. And the solution to grief? Therapy! So if you go to therapy and use code MADPAT, you get 15% off therapy today! This video is sponsored by therapy. <laughs> past and ignoring your grief, but as it so often happens, the real solution is to reject the false dichotomy and choose a third option, oh confronting my the grief and resolving it. Alright, alright, alright. So he should have not done what he did, right? 
So what should he have done? Embraced Morty when he saw him? But he didn't think he'd ever see Morty again, okay? So what should he have done different? And he, what, what should Rick have done different? What, bury your wife? Is that the solution? Bro, just bury your wife and cry. And then you'll be happy. <laughs> And that's what Rick and Morty, both the show and the characters, are trying to tell us in this episode. Th Dude, they literally jumped to another dimension. They didn't in confront their grief at all. This is how you resolve Rick's character arc. So what does a healthy approach to dealing with grief look like? Well, according to Dr. J. William Warden of Harvard, here goes random psychiatrist information. Harvard Medical School, a mental health expert who specializes in grief counseling, the solution to negative feelings isn't to numb them like- By the way, there's no one answer to this, okay? Every single psychiatrist on the planet has a totally different theory as to how to deal with negative feelings, okay? Just take that with a grain of salt. This man's just- Picking and choosing his favorite Harvard physicist dream style, t teaching you how the Matt Pat speed run of how to <laughs> how to recap an episode the most times in a single YouTube video. Rick so often does. Nor is it to run from them like we see with Jerry here. No, the solution is to accept those emotions, to feel them so your body and brain can move forward with the best parts of your life while leaving behind the painful remnant. Now, that's not to say that you should seek out your grief and inflict emotional pain on yourself. I mean, we've been watching Rick do that to himself for the entirety of the show. You mean mess? Masochism isn't the answer? Seeking out pain because that's what he thinks wrong. he deserves. But accepting pain is not the same as seeking it out. And Rick seems to be moving past that phase of his grieving. In fact, Rick seems to be embracing one of Dr. Warden's recommended methods for healthy grief processing. Learning to rely on family. His family was killed, so he went to a different dimension to rely on family. I guess it doesn't matter where we're from if we're together, huh? Good final moral thing. This I feel like he missed the entire point of the episode. I, I have never seen someone miss the boat so much. This is everyone's original dimension now. Great wrap-ups, kids. For all his attempts to push them away, in the end, Rick realizes the importance of family. Even oh, if the God. family he has now is a found family. A Dude, that's, that's the point of the episode. The point of the episode is bonds beyond blood. It's not this trichotomy of grief. Assembled from variants and clones that he's gathered from throughout the multiverse. And when Mr. Frundles escapes containment and puts everyone at risk, see what happens. Though Rick is quick to bail on the entire dimension, notice the one thing he doesn't bail on is his family. I could have left you guys. You think the concept of family oh matters to me? I'm not even your Rick. That's right, Rick. You could have left them behind, but you didn't. Because unlike Rick Prime, you care. I promise I'm not, you know, bait to make that... Because it's about bonds beyond blood and not at all the thing that you're trying to say. Rick, come back. What? For you to be bait, the guy'd have to value something. In fact, I think we see the very moment where the switch flips in Rick's mind. When Morty... D the flip... The switch flipped seasons ago that it showed that he actually cared about Morty. Doesn't let Rick continue on his mission to kill Rick Prime. You go down there, he's just gonna kill you! Good. What? You don't care if you die, why do you care if I die? Yeah, well you get it from him, not me. I don't know him. You're my grandpa, Rick. Rick and Morty, a hundred years. In that moment, Rick realizes that protecting Morty, his living family, is more important than avenging his dead family. Though Rick doesn't quite wow. give up on his quest for revenge just yet, this is a Another huge step in his personal healing process. Throughout its more recent- Not really. Cause Rick- I, I love how you conveniently left this part out. But Rick says to Morty, You just tried this last season! What are you, a suicide bomber? He, he literally- he said that to him. In, in the last season. In, in, in that episode. You failed to summarize that. Meaning that this was not the turning point for Rick, Mr. I watched the episode Matt Pet Seasons, Rick and Morty has dealt with the tension between classic Rick and Morty adventures versus the show's canon and persistent narrative. The episodic sci-fi hijinks that make the show fun to watch versus the plot and character arcs that truly elevate the show to another- What was the theory? I still don't know the theory. I watched the- he recapped the episode four times and I still don't know what his theory is. Another level. But I think what the season six premiere does it's is make clear grief. that both of these things yes. don't have to be in conflict. Look, look as he enters the vagina, you see this, this is a metaphor for entering a vagina and getting pussy, which I never did before. Both are meaningful and important. This episode, and I suspect this season, are gonna be about how Rick copes with his grief using the classic styled adventures, but now embracing his newly found and chosen family. The creators of the series are combining these two parts of the show. And bro, bro, you get the meta this is a meta a me the the meta game theory you see there was no theory in this game theory <laughs> mind blown
In doing it, they suddenly hit on something important. Sometimes you don't realize when you're healing. Sometimes it's only after the fact that you look back and see how much you've grown. And if you ask me, making this season a bunch of episodic sci-fi adventures while secretly also being Rick's healing art is how you move forward. Is it a prediction? Is it wishful thinking? Well, for now, we're just gonna call it a theory. A film theory! He knows it's not a theory. So he says, uh, well, I mean, this is not a theory, but for now, we're gonna call it a theory because that's what the channel's about and that's what I'm gonna put in the title. Thanks for watching. Yeah, if you enjoyed this analysis, definitely pick up my merch that I am launching right now because I'm doing a Degenerathon. Uh, where if I hit 3,000 so Frick! It confused me. <laughs> it confused me. Like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitch. Stay weird, fam.